This is my rocket powered catapult that I built on my quest to see how far I could launch a tennis ball. <laughs> All right, so to start off this project, we're going to need to make rockets because otherwise, how is our trebuchet gonna move? And because I'm not a complete idiot, I will not be showing you how to build these rockets. Yo, what's up guys? So today we're gonna be making rocket fuel. No, no, no building rockets. Not at home. But I guess I could still give you the general outline. All right, so I picked up this brand new blender. And so I'm gonna give this a crack open. All right, so the reason that we got this blender was so that we don't contaminate things with our chemicals. After blending an undisclosed amount of legal white powder, we blend another completely legal white powder, which you definitely can't tell the contents of based on the bag. <laughs> Did I mention they're called sugar rockets? Next, we take kitty litter and blend it up too. This litter is basically just shards of clay, so they make really good end caps for the rockets. And that's it. That's all of the ingredients. Now, I do think it's important to mention the white mixture should never in any way be ingested. This would be wholly irresponsible. And- Matt, are you eating it? Well, no, it's, it's dressing. Now it's time to make the tools to prepare the rockets. I drew some lines on a wooden dowel to show how far into the rocket the fuel should be pushed, then measured and cut out the PVC pipe, which serves as the encasing. After that, all that was left was to assemble a rocket. Now again, I'm not telling you how to build these, but hypothetically, if you were to layer in such a way that the clay came first, then the fuel, oh. then more clay, hammering in between each layer, and then finally drilling out a hole in the middle, hypothetically, you could make something similar to this rocket. No. No. Duct tape solves all your problems. Right, okay, so it is officially time for the first launch. And you may recall, I've brought a little friend with me from two videos ago. This gigantic magnifying glass could focus enough energy to spontaneously light wood on fire. So I guess, yeah, now I just need to line up the lens with the sun and hopefully our rocket will take off with no issues. There's gonna be no issues. There were issues. The magnifying glass idea failed almost instantly. Instead, I got into my safety box and just used a normal lighter. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> really? Oh shit, I'm scared now. It wasn't working at all. So I added some of the pure fuel and tried to light it. Coincidentally, this is also how I found out some fire extinguishers are one-time use. Wow, what a waste of money. So, I tried again, and again, and again. But it just wouldn't work. Time to research, I guess. All right, let's figure out what I did wrong. No way! We finally hit 69, 69 subscribers! Nah, right, I'm getting distracted. Oh! That's such a cool double backflip. Since I clearly couldn't stay on task, I'll just tell you the issues right now. First of all, my fuses were awful and wouldn't stay lit. And second, I was adding way too much cat litter at the bottom of my rocket. So I made new fuses and adjusted the amount of clay at the bottom of the rockets. Finally, it was time for the second test. All right, guys, it is time for our second test. I've got a new brick, got a new wick. I don't know, what else rhymes? I've got a huge dip. Well, I'd say it's officially time for test two. Oh yeah, oh yeah, let's go, let's go. Again, I gave up on the magnifying glass immediately and just switched to a lighter. But the rocket failed again. No shot. Actually? At this point, I just didn't know what to do. It was starting to feel like this whole video was gonna be a complete failure. All right, time for a quick math section. You thought this video was fun? Hell no. This is a high school classroom right now. Using this slow-mo, it takes four seconds for the rocket to move three quarters of a meter. At an eighth speed, that means it took half a second in real life. Now, since force equals mass times acceleration, we can use these values to calculate the force to be 13.2 newtons. Now, the system weighs 2.2 kilograms, 4.8 pounds for my American friends. We get the friction force to be 8.6 newtons. Added together, we get the equivalent of 4.9 pounds. And thus, we should be able to make the brick fly. Thank you for listening. Now back to the video. Oh, this is the best day of my life. <laughs> it burned holes in our grass. Oh no, I'm sorry. All right, so I'm in a farm field far away from anybody that I could hit with a rocket. And if my math was correct, which let's be honest, my math is always correct. One rocket should be enough to make a brick hover. So that's what we're testing. 
So I've got it balancing on a post here, and we're gonna try with one rocket at first. It might be unbalanced, but we're gonna see how this goes. No limbs, but it worked. Well, here's the new setup, and I think there's a very good chance that this does not work. I mean, getting two rockets to go off at the same time sounds like a nightmare. All right, well, that was an utter failure, but utter failures happen. And I've got one more rocket, so why not launch it? Let's see how high it goes. <laughs> why me? <laughs> why? <laughs> why did it go so cool? Now that is what I would call a success. Even though, I mean, it didn't go that high, but still, you know, still, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy. Jump scare, it's math time again. I just wanted to show you that, based on some admittedly very flawed calculations, my estimate for how far we can launch the ball using these rockets is about 100 meters or 330 feet. Now, if you hate math, don't forget to subscribe. And if you love math, don't forget to subscribe. Next, I needed to make the sling, but where was I gonna get the leather? Well, as luck would have it, there was a really ugly child walking in front of my house, ripe for the stealing. What? Give me your backpack, nerd. No, what? No, no! So using the spare parts, I pretended to make the sling on camera and then secretly made it off camera. After that, it was time to work on the wood. I am going to cut this wood with the throw of a knife. Ready? Oh my God, that worked perfectly. After cutting the wood, it became time to start assembling. Now, luckily I was able to edit this footage down to about 20 seconds, so it didn't even really take me that long to assemble. And the same follows for this steel bar, which I cut in like three seconds. Now that most of the woodworking was done, I moved on to making the CAD models. And I'm proud to say, these only took me about eight hours. They took me eight hours. But they came out very nice. Wow. All right, so we're nearing the end of the build, but I needed some way to make the post spin. So I decided I'd make some 3D printed bearings. I've got big bearings and two smaller bearings, just like that. All right, let's get back to it then. The final touch was to drill out the middle of the spinning arm. This is the worst piece of equipment I've ever used in my entire life. Once the bearings fit properly, all I had to do was attach it to the base and do about five more things off camera, which you'll see in approximately 15 seconds. Oh my gosh, that works so well. Welcome my friends to the completed trebuchet. First, we've got our beautiful wooden frame made completely out of two by fours. And by high request, we have galvanized stainless steel bars. Now this bar is spinning on 3D printed bearings. That works surprisingly well, if I do say so myself. But what I'm most proud of is the release mechanism, which I stole from this channel. Sorry, I forget your name. I got all the designs from there, but I did have to 3D print it myself. So as you can see, we've got two ropes attached to the ball, which attaches over here. Now this will spin indefinitely, but the really cool part is as long as I've got this pulled, as soon as this mechanism comes down, it's going to release the ball and send it flying, hopefully. Okay, for our first run, we're just gonna use my arm. No rockets. Three, two, one. Okay, okay, way to release, it just didn't work. <laughs> Ball got stuck. Three, two, one, go. Five. Three, two, one, go. I hate you, man. Another try. Okay, the big adjustment I'm doing is I'm rotating this so that it releases the string early. I need everybody to pray for me. Three, two, one. All right, the issue is right now, I moved it so that it won't release properly. Even if I put it here, it just skips it, right? So that's fine. Rocket! I don't know why I said that. We've attached the rocket. It doesn't matter if the ball doesn't go. We'll do another test later. All right, back up, back up, back up. Why is it still going? How much is in there? I don't know why that lasted so long. That was super cool though. All right, all right, back up. <laughs> Whatever, I don't even care. <laughs> oh, no, sorry, Luke. Dude, hell yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Move back a bit. Yeah, it's still going. 
my poor marker. Where did the chicken come from? The main issue I was dealing with was that the ball either wouldn't release or wouldn't hold. So I got straight to work on stealing Tom Stanton's design again, in which he used a separate strap for the release mechanism. So after sewing that together, I worked on the balancing mechanism. Next I worked on the 3D printed parts, which had practically crumbled to pieces. After that, I properly tied the strings and torched the ends so that they wouldn't undo. Finally, the trebuchet 2.0 was done. I have been working like a hog to finish my trebuchet. And let me just tell you, it's been upgraded a lot. We fixed the strings. We fixed the slings. We added some springs. And it all culminates together to this beautiful trebuchet, which I'm going to test for the first time now. So, you know, hopefully it'll work. I'm running out of options here. Oh, oh, oh my god! What? What? I'm actually beaming. Okay, uh, let's go to the farm. Whoosh. All right, welcome back to the farm. We have our completed trebuchet, and let me show you guys how to load it. Okay, so the ball goes in the pocket, then this string is gonna go and wrap up over this. Then the ball comes down here, fits perfectly into this 3D printed mold. Then finally we have this strap which comes on over and hooks down on here. And then we have the final setup. We're going all in. I've got three rockets this time, and I specially printed a CAD model, and they fit perfectly like that. Duct tape. Song. Okay, I think it's time to launch. Three, two, one. All right, that went amazingly. Like, I am ecstatic. Uh, but there are two issues I've identified, and this is why we have three attempts. The first issue is, by the footage, we can tell that it goes very horizontally, but we want it to go up at a 45 degree angle. So, oh, come on. Oh, that hurt to do. The second issue is that the rockets are too heavy. As you can tell, even without fuel, they drag it to the bottom. So we need to add a counterweight. Hey, that's perfect. That was first try. Okay, well this is our final launch and I've got four more rockets left, but my adapter only holds three rockets. Where did you put the final rocket, Matthew? I'll tell you where I put the final rocket. Boom. Let's launch! Let's launch! I'm so excited. Let's fly, let's fly! Woo! <laughs> Luke, I got slightly bad news. F you, F you. Ah. That's okay. Buddy, you gotta move at least. You're going the wrong way. Well, today we learned how to make rockets. We learned how to make a trebuchet. We went through the engineering process. We saw all of my failures. And honestly, in the end, I'm proud. So subscribe for more. Ah!